Hey everyone, thanks for joining today. Looking forward to a great webinar. Business risk review results for August, as always, as it's been happening in the last 18 months, plenty happening out there, plenty of news, some really good stats. Um, we're seeing plenty of things out there. And of course, I've got some economic insights from our economists too. So thank you for joining us today. Let's kick off. Key product suite for Creditor Watch. I won't spend too much time on this as I'm sure many of you are very familiar with the Creditor Watch product suite. We are a commercial credit reporting agency with a full suite of credit management tools from online customer onboarding using a dedicated branded um, you know, to your company online application system allows customers to onboard um, very easily, fill out your application, uh, credit application, run all the required credit reports, checks, verifications in the back end, and ultimately spit out a recommendation or a decision for you, approve, reject, refer. Um, suite of assessment tools, including reports, risk ratings, uh, payment ratings, and the ability to monitor and receive alerts on your customers, which is extremely important. Always important, but extremely important at the moment to really understand how your uh, existing customer portfolio is performing. Um, you can upload all of your customers into your Creditor Watch account, receive important alerts as they take place. Let's keep going. Key highlights. This is a really good slide. Just to sort of flag exactly how we have the ability to actually stand up here and talk about what is happening in, um, in the economy, what we're seeing from a credit risk perspective. Um, we've got over 55,000 customers across Australia who are submitting, providing data in various ways. Um, we're also plugged into you know, ASIC, the Australian Business Register, Courts, uh, the only bureau that has an integration with Zero and MYOB. Um, we've sold a huge number of reports. We're managing credit files on every business and company in Australia, including sole traders, trusts and partnerships. Um, so with all that data coming in, it gives us the ability to give you some really fantastic insights, both looking you know, retrospectively but, and, and, and also looking um, forward into the future, what we're expecting to see. Uh, quick housekeeping on the right. We will send you a link to the recording of this as well as the slides as well. Hopefully you don't have to leave us early, but if you do, don't fret, we will provide that for you. Um, as I said, economic insights from, uh, from, from Harley Dale, Credit Watch's chief economist. It's got a couple of slides there, which is, um, which is fantastic to be able to, to, to utilize and share with you. We're gonna look at trade activity. So specifically looking at you know, invoices, the value of invoices and how they've been affected over the last couple of years. Um, inquiries, default rates, and then of course, some you know comparisons around um, insolvencies, defaults, court actions, et cetera. So as always, please do ask questions. I will get to them at the end um, and I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on the time. Sometimes we do run a little bit over the half an hour that we sort of put aside for this. Business risk review, as I've touched on, pulling a huge amount of data in on a monthly basis, and that allows us to report on some key risk figures um, not just you know publicly and, and government uh, data that we're, we're accessing, of course, a huge amount of data coming through from our customer base as well, really unique to Creditor Watch, not only beneficial for both um, the business risk review that we're going through now, but also all of that data is being ingested into the report so you can get a better understanding of how your customers are tracking and, and potentially even the states and industries that you're exposed to. First slide here that Harley's got me to share is the GDP quarterly growth. So as I'm sure most people know, we didn't have a, uh, a you know a negative quarter for the June quarter just gone, which feels like a long, long time ago. Uh, there were fears that it would um, a, an, another dip in, into the negative, but, but surprisingly, I think this shows just how well um, the country was performing prior to the, to the most recent lockdowns that are affecting, you know, in particular New South Wales. Um, ACT and Victoria. Big question mark over what will happen, of course, with the September quarter. It's a shame that the data doesn't come out a little bit quicker. So what have we got to learn today? Obviously, the Australian economy grew 0.7% in the June quarter, which was a, a fantastic result. And annual growth was strong at 9.6%. So there really was that big, that big bounce, um, that big recovery 
out of uh, last year when when the economy opened back up and, and we had a you know a fairly good six months, albeit with some lockdowns for various states and, and regions, um, really positive. And I hope that you know we expect to see something quite similar when we come out of um, the inevitable lockdowns when when inevitably they come to an end. Um, obviously, looking at October and November sort of staged rollouts, which is which is great news. Um, annual growth rate obviously may look spectacular, but um, it also reflects the fact that there was a huge, huge dip in the middle of um, last year and then the back end of last year. Um, the June quarter, as I said, feels like a long time ago. By the time that data came out, which was somewhat positive, we were obviously in the depths of lockdown here on the on the East Coast, um, particularly New South Wales and Victoria. Um, given the subsequent extended lockdowns since that data came out, um, it's obviously having a huge impact on um, a large portion of the Australian population, both as people and also as businesses, of course. Um, the September quarter, Harley adds here, will certainly be ugly and will, contra will contract sharply. Um, so should be no surprises there. The question is how much will it, um, how much will it contract? And also by the time that result does come out and is made public, um, hopefully we've got some positive news and, and, the, and the, the economy is starting to open back up, states are starting to open back up and there is that freedom of movement that, that we're all um, you know, hanging on for. Um, Harley adds here, the concept of a technical recession is highly overrated. The fact is many SMEs and households are already experiencing re recessionary conditions, which is certainly the truth. And you know, we will see through the rest of um, through the rest of this uh, presentation, in particular, those you know those public those publicly available government available stats like administrations and, and court actions, where they're ultimately false positives. We've seen it since COVID hit that you know while businesses are, are struggling more than ever or more than you know in in in, um, in anyone's memory, administrations um, haven't gone up like technically they should. Um, so that is certainly one of the things that you know is, is hiding how how tough it is out there for uh, for businesses and, and in particular SMEs, but also how tough it is for people out there, um, not just from a from a job perspective, just from a, a personal and mental health and physical health perspective. Everyone um, in lockdown really is uh, is doing it tough, but some certainly doing it tougher than others. So um, our thoughts go out. To everyone who is uh, is certainly struggling, and, and and I say, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. If you think back to you know March, April last year, there was no there was no light, and and we came through it, and we got through it. Um, we know that there is that light that is coming, and it seems to be moving quite quick, which is nice. Um, so September quarter lockdown um, period is is showing somewhat of a ge geographical divide, and and that's really between the lockdown states. And territories of New South Wales, Vic, and um, ACT, and of course the non-lockdown states, which seem to be doing quite well. Um, WA obviously thriving off the back of you know the the thirst for um, the iron ore that, that, that that's in there, but also the fact that they can get on with daily life um, and, and 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 trade and and move around and buy and spend etc. So. The, the, those greater freedoms are certainly a huge um, supporter of, you know, an increase in economic conditions. Whereas the lockdown states are, are of course, suffering heavily as a result of um, the, the, the lack of freedom and movement, and, and, and businesses essentially being closed um, uh, around around the states and territories. The RBA confirmed earlier this month that interest rates will certainly remain at record lows for the foreseeable future. And, and you know, these, these most recent lockdowns will certainly put paid to any suggestions by other economists that you know, they, they were gonna be forced to, to have a look at increasing interest rates as a result of you know, increasing inflation and, 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 a, and a, a more positive bounce back in the early uh, part of this calendar year. Um, what, we, what we see as foreseeable future will certainly mean right into 2024. So if you do have a mortgage or, or, or you are borrowing as a business, this is, this is obviously a really good thing because it means that essentially this, this policy is supporting you know, measures for, for businesses. Um, it, it's keeping downward pressure on borrowing costs and, and that will be in play for quite a while yet, which is certainly a positive. As a result, there's plenty of businesses out there that are um, you know, benefiting from this, and, and it is it is most certainly keeping them alive. And and the, 
I think the hope is that when we come out of these lockdowns and we start to get back to somewhat of a, of a normal um, life and, and rhythm, those, uh, those uh, borrowing costs will remain low despite the fact that economic activity will increase. So it gives, um, it gives businesses a, a really good platform in which to launch off. Um, the last point he's mentioning here, SMEs need to be thinking now about what opportunities may present themselves as business climate brightens around lockdown restrictions being eased. I think as best as possible, businesses and business owners and managers should certainly be preparing for that. We know that turning a business back on, opening a restaurant, opening a cafe, you know, your, your retail store, um, any of those that have been shut for a long time, it's not cert certainly not a push to start type of operation. It's, a, it's an old school um, you know, steam train that that needs to be to, needs to be warmed up, and it takes it takes time, it takes days, it takes weeks to to really plan for that reopening. Um, but that reopening is coming. So if you're not thinking about it now, you certainly should be. And I think as um, as credit managers, credit providers, suppliers out there, um, that should certainly be at the top of your mind as well. How how can we support that, and how can we take advantage of the reopening happening and not missing not missing the uh, the starter's gun when it does go. All right, a fairly new graph that we've been, uh, we introduced, I think possibly last month, maybe the month before, year on year trade receivables growth. So ultimately what this is looking at is um, the, the red line there is year on year trade receivables growth. And, and um, the, the darker line there is the, is the three month moving average. We can see that through, through um, you know, 2019 was, was certainly, you know, a, a, a tough year, right? You kind of go, well, hold on a second, you know, Corona didn't start until this, you know, so-called job keeper period. Well, the fact is that, you know, there was somewhat of a downturn in, 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 um, not economic activity, but, you know, in, in, in business and trade itself, you know, we had, um, we had the New South Wales election, we had the federal election, and we know as a result of that, it stops a lot of spending and investment. Um, a lot of it is put on hold while, you know, particularly larger businesses and government wait to see who the new government would be. We then had, um, of course, the, the fires and the, and the floods um, in late 2019, early 2020, um, which meant, you know, we, we were certainly already seeing, you know, somewhat of a, a, um, a slowing growth, we're still above that zero. Remember, it, while it is going down, we're, we're still looking at, you know, year on year or three month um, growth. So if I get my cursor which seems to have disappeared on me there we go um this is still above the the, the zero line in, in sort of you know september october of 2019 so there still was growth compared to the previous year um however we saw that the late late 2019 early 2020 um was, was certainly not as good as the as the previous year and then of course corona hit job keeper period coming out of 2020 um you know the, the economy the states cities started to open back up people got back to normal you know people were out and about spending still couldn't travel overseas so a lot of people had money to spend money to burn so to speak um, and we saw a, a big uplift in in receivables growth so that's looking at you know how many invoices and the value of those invoices um people were, were uh, people and businesses were, were flush with cash and, and we started to see um a, a big uptick until of course you know almost bang on with the with the end of job keeper despite the fact that march April, May, and then most of June was really positive from a from a you know a COVID perspective and, and being open. Um, that the lack of funds that were flowing through from the government um, showed a huge huge dip in um, in the in the in the buying essentially power of businesses. They they they, they didn't have as much cash within their business, and, and we saw that big dip. Um, this is looking at the the average dollar value um, of invoices itself, so we can see that you know. Uh, the, the obvious, you know, up and downs there are, are through the sort of December Jan period, but it was it is fairly consistent, you know, through 18, 19, and then 20, there's a big drop. End of 20, we see a big increase, which is great, and then JobKeeper comes to an end in March, and we've seen a big drop down. So, you know, we're at a peak of sort of 150,000, and we're down to to 80,000 um, from the JobKeeper period to now. And then if you looked at, you know, just the end of JobKeeper, about 130k down to 80, um, $80,000 is a significant reduction. Um, uh, you know, uh, maths is gonna be wrong here, but you know, sort of 25% or so uh, reduction, maybe 30% there. I'm sure someone can call that out in the, uh, in the Q and A section, prove me wrong. 
Um, and then the other one is the number of invoices. So not just looking at the value, but also the number. So here you can see it's dropped away from, you know, high 30s at the end of that March job keeper period down to down to sort of 22. Um, so another significant reduction, all time low, going back all the way to, uh, uh, you know, 2016. So um, this is primarily looking at small and medium businesses. Um, it means that they are um, dealing with less customers and selling less to each customer. And, and as a result of that, you know, that means a huge reduction in, um, in revenue, of course. Um, it'll put pressure on margins and, as well. And of course, therefore, less, pre uh, less, less profit if they're making a profit coming through at all. And, and of course, for you know, small and medium business owners, that is mortgage payments, um, you know, school fees, uh, food on the table as well. So it certainly is what I would call you know, dire circumstances at the moment, but hopefully looking at the date, 15th of September, you know, hopefully this time next month, we, are, we have got you know, real clarity on, on what is opening up, where it's opening up and how and, how, and that, you know, what we can do out there. And, and that will certainly bring a lot of um, positivity and enthusiasm to, to people and to businesses. And, and, and I think you'll start to see uh, wallets start to open back up. And it, it's good that it's sort of happening into the summer months as well, because we know that there is a, certainly a big increase uh, through the summer period. From a credit inquiries perspective, we've, we've also seen, you know, uh, the first reduction in um, in a number of months. Um, you know, it was all looking quite positive, and it's kind of gone back to, you know, oh, and and behind. Sorry, you know, twenty twenty numbers, which is which is um, quite um, a disappointing and negative trend to see. Credit inquiries certainly is the you know the heartbeat of trade. It is really you know, a business assessing another business, a supplier assessing a debtor, a debtor applying for, for credit or, or finance or, or, or trade credit, whatever it may be. It shows that there's that business activity, right? Um, they're getting on with it, they're trading. That's, that's to, see, to see the fairly consistent increases from, um, you know, late 20, 2012, sorry, early, early 2021, um, through to, to to last month and then uh, sorry through to July and then you know have that big drop and, and to, to basically end up back almost at you know December numbers is is, is quite um, quite disappointing but but not not surprising whatsoever given um, you know the, the state of the lockdowns and, and how that has decimated businesses and the economy from a payments default perspective uh, August 21 versus 2021 we've actually seen a 20 percent increase which is um, certainly um, something to take notice of we've got some new stats coming out around you know the, the probability of default after a or after a um sorry probability of you know failure or insolvency after a default is lodged at something like 25 percent of uh, businesses uh, fail within the, the next uh, 12 months so um you know certainly something to keep an eye out on if you're receiving email alerts that defaults have been registered against your customers, you know, I would, I would be standing up taking notice of that and, and having a plan in place um, to, to react and deal with that. Um, if we compare it to 2020, it's, an, it's gone up 1%. Um, and if we compare it to 2019, still well down, 41% down compared to, you know, pre-COVID numbers. And that's why we're reporting across the three years there. Probability of default. Um, Probably no surprises here. Accommodation and food services very much at the top there, um, close to, to 6%. The fact is that, you know, uh, majority or, every, or yeah, the majority of, uh, of, of accommodation and food services, you know, hospitality venues, restaurants, cafes, bars, you know, hotels are, are shut or running on, you know, running on fumes at the moment if they're doing, you know, takeaways and whatnot. Transport, postal, warehousing second, and then admin and support services coming in at third, no significant changes um, across uh, across any of, of, of these other than just coming down to education and training, which has seen a, a positive change from, uh, from July through to August. Um, importantly, though, no, no big increases from July to August as well, which is, which is certainly a, a positive to find um, within this particular slide. Court actions, just quickly on this, probably no surprises. New South Wales, Vic, um, down significantly. Queensland's had some, you know, obviously had some lockdowns themselves, you know, it just becomes very difficult to actually um, facilitate court actions, whereas WA very much open, unaffected for, for a very long time. We've seen a huge jump there. 
um, and I will try to get some stats on what what that looks like compared to um, compared to 2019 pre-COVID numbers. But you know, a fairly good indicator there that things are getting back to normal. Um, overall, August 21 versus 2020, we've seen a three percent increase, but we're still down 39 percent um, as a as a as a nation for court actions on uh, pre-COVID numbers. August 2019. External administrations obviously spoke about these um, earlier on. We had started to see a progressive increase over, over the start of this um, calendar year, back up to June. But as soon as those lockdowns started to take effect, we've seen, um, we've seen them drop away again. No surprise, we saw that all through you know, last sort of calendar year as well. Um, what we will likely see is this will, this will this will sort of remain at, at these low levels for, for quite some time. Um, we know that the ATO and, and the banks in particular are, are certainly not winding up or, or putting companies into administration like they normally would, and they make up a significant portion of, of administrations. Um, and, and while lockdowns are, are in effect and, and economic activity is, is, um, is under pressure, um, that, that will certainly remain, but eventually they have to start heading back up to those pre-COVID numbers of you know, close to 800 and above. This is just by state. So a couple of things to sort of pull out here. Obviously, no one, uh, no one back to, to pre-COVID numbers, though SA and ACT are pretty close, but their, their volumes are so low, um, um, you know, sort of sub 50 and probably sub 25 there for, for those. WA, we can see that there has been an increase um, from August 21 to August 20. So they're certainly getting back. Queensland as well, Vic, um, but, but New South Wales certainly still down even on um, the depths of, uh, of COVID last year. You know, a long way to go. You, you're there, what, 150 on 450. So, um, you know, 30% of where we would normally be at, which is, a, which is a huge difference, of course. So a good one to keep an eye on over the next few months. So plenty to sort of ingest there, and, and we've got you know we've got more coming. We've got a, a big launch of um, something special next month as well. So we'll have some additional um, numbers to look at, stats, industries, states as well. So I'm I'm quite excited about that. Um, if you do have any questions, please uh, please jump in and have a look. Let me just jump in and have a look to see if there are any questions. Um, I like the year-on-year -year trade receivables growth graph. Downward movement could reflect a combination of lower revenue or faster payment. Do you have these figures? Do you have figures on those and by industry? Um, I think specifically that is probably looking at um, the payment times per industry. We will next month. We, we, we're just re, redoing some of our um, some of the models that go into that and the data. So we will have some payment times and and sort of. Um, a different way of looking at the risk per industry and also um, looking at the risk per, um, per state. Um, downward movement could be faster payment. Um, this is looking at total receivable. So it's not looking at overdue or um, um, in arrears. Uh, so it shouldn't, in, in my mind, faster payment shouldn't reflect that. It's just looking at you know the, the total value of, an in, of invoices and the, and the total number of invoices. So um, the fact is that less invoices are being issued and, and the value of those invoices also dropping. Um, a lot of talk about the ATO finally releasing data on non-engaged overdue tax. Are you geared up for receipt and display of this data? We certainly are. I um, am pretty confident based on the discussions that we've had that we will be the only credit reporting bureau that is initially reporting on ATO tax default data. We're hoping to start receiving that in October, and as we understand it, we're certainly on track. Uh, sorry, the ATO is certainly on track to start sending that data. Um, we expect volumes to be quite low, of course, because um, companies with overdue tax defaults um, or with overdue tax um, debts, I should say, um, only have to engage with the ATO in, in order to not have a default lodged against them. As, as, as we understand, the ATO is saying the collection activity um, or the, or the payment of, of the payment of, of tax debts and the engagement has skyrocketed since um, news of, of this started to get out into the media. And also the fact that the ATO has started to send out letters saying, hey, if you don't, obviously not in these words, they're, they're much more refined over at the ATO, but if you don't pay this debt or engage with us, we will be registering 
a default with the Credit Reporting Bureau. So yes, Credit Watch is fully engaged. Um, we have pretty much finished building um, all of the, the technology side of things for us to receive the data and then push that into our credit reports and also of course push them out um, in, in the alert. So um, October is when we expect to see that data. Great question there. Um, how about data of trading address instead of registered address of defaults, court actions by state? Good question. Look, the fact is that you know SMEs make up 90 odd percent of you know businesses out there and the vast, you know, the vast, vast majority of those, their, their trading and, and registered addresses are, are going to be the same. Um, of course, there's, you know, times where they use a uh, an accountant's uh, address with a registered address. Um, I'd have to come back to you on um, areas, but we our scores, for example, will look at um, the location of that, and it is looking, it's certainly looking at the trading address instead of the registered address, um, because it takes into consideration. Um, the cost of commercial uh, real estate and rent in that particular area that they're that they're trading in. Um, come February, if COVID affected, um, of COVID affected, we will be two years since COVID. How accurate will the pre-COVID data be then? Um, well, we we looking back at the stats, March even March twenty twenty. Um, was was hardly affected. It really didn't. This, the numbers really didn't start to kick in until um, April. Um, so we still do have a few months. Then we can always go back and look at. Um, you know, we can continue to report on on 2019 as as pre-COVID numbers. So as we get closer to to going to two years, um, we can just uh, obviously look back and 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 skip 2020 or, or if we had to, or even 2021. So yeah, we will we'll certainly still start to report keep reporting on pre-COVID figures. We won't forget about that because it's extremely important to have that almost as the um, as the, 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 the yardstick, so to speak. Um, is there any visibility of the backlog in the courts? Um, no, we, we don't we don't get that visibility. Um, I have a feeling some, you know, some uh, credit managers that we've spoken to have, have kind of been given indications at individual courts when, when they've been engaged in a, you know, a, a statement of claim or, or a debt collection action through the courts. Um, but we don't have it um, uh, necessarily across, um, you know, as as a, as a state based or a, or a court system based or even a national base. But I think the fact that court actions are, are so far down it is, it, you could make a, a fairly educated guess that, um, you know, the, the the reason they're down is is a, is a backlog, or a big part of that is a backlog, and, and another big part is, of course, the ATO and um, and the banks not not issuing court actions uh, for the collection of debt. Has there been any tracting reinsolvency practitioner appointments this, since this came into effect? Uh, sorry, I'm not quite understanding that question, Steve. If you wanted to just re rewrite that, um, if not, I'll, I'll come back to you and maybe I can report on that in the next business risk review. Um, it could be to do with the small business um, uh, insolvency uh, legislation that came in at the beginning of the year. I actually haven't looked at the number of those in some time, but the fact that nothing's really been reported in the press or hasn't been called out by um, by our analysts, I would suggest that the numbers are still extremely low. Um, you can jump onto uh, insolvency.gov.au and actually select that particular um, uh, insolvency notice to to see if they to to see the ones um, uh, to see if there has been a big increase. I think there's sort of there's two types of notices for that particular new uh, small business uh, insolvency legislation. So um, I will jump in and have a look at that. And, and, if, and if there's anything relevant um, in terms of an increase, I guess it's relevant if there's, you know, hasn't done much, um, but we'll, we'll report on that next time. But as I said, I don't think, I don't think there's been much movement in that um, restructuring uh, space. Um, I think this is the next question as well. What is it? Yes. Next question is, is addressing this. Um, there was one last week that someone saw. What has the take up been like? Very small, I gather. And is it on the increase? I, I will have a look at that for for next um, for next business risk review. So yeah, thank you for flagging that. But I'm I'm pretty sure it has remained um, quite low um, despite um, the media attention that it got at the time. All right. Um, 
there's one or two other questions that are quite specific that I'll I'll come back to those individuals with. So I'm not I'm not ignoring you. Um, so I will come back to you on those. So there's no other questions. Um, appreciate the, the Q and A. I, I, I like the the engagement. I like to get you know thinking um, on the spot as well. So so thank you for those that, that did ask questions. And and as always, you you can of course ask questions post uh, webinar by going to uh, uh, creditorwatch.com.au there's a live chat option or you can you can email us support at creditorwatch.com.au or give us a call as well speak to your account managers if you're a customer um, I do encourage you of course to become a customer if you're not um, I do have the poll that I like to run I'm pretty sure it is set up if you would like to be contacted by someone from Creditor Watch, please do let me know it allows us to be really quick and get in touch with you answer any questions you might have set up a demo um, whatever it is that you need, please just indicate yes. Don't be shy to indicate no either. Um, as always, there's plenty of information that we're releasing through social, in particular LinkedIn is a great one. Um, if you're engaged with LinkedIn, jump on there and, and, and give credit to watch a follow. If not, um, you can of course subscribe to our newsletter online at creditorwatch.com.au or you can always go to creditorwatch.com.au and jump onto the blog as well. There's plenty there for, uh, for you to consume. So with that in mind, thank you everyone. Um, pretty good bang on almost 30 minutes there. Thanks everyone for, for your time. I, uh, I hope you're coping okay through, through lockdown. If you are in lockdown and if you're not in lockdown, I, you know, I hope you're enjoying, enjoying your freedom. Do not take it for granted. Um, everyone stay safe out there and, and hopefully we've got some you know more positive news um, this time next month there'll be plenty of uh, new insights that I've got for you to, to deliver which is uh, which is exciting so if nothing else um, please tune in because uh, we've got a, a brand new um, reporting tool from a uh, business risk review perspective so until then take it easy be safe and I will see you next month